Welcome to Grow Green Barbados. I'm your host, Dr. David Bino, agronomist, economist, and sustainable development specialist. On this episode, we take a look at organic gardening. And I have my friend, Simba Fitz, next to me. And this is gonna be an amazing episode because organic gardening really has significant benefits for your health, for saving money, for making money, and also for the environment. Now, there are many myths about organic gardening, and this episode will dispel those myths. All you'll need is an open mind and a willingness to embrace change. And you'll see for sure, for sure, that organic gardening benefits the society, it benefits the environment, it benefits the economy, but it also benefits your health. Join us and grow green Barbados. Now, this is one of the benefits of organic gardening. You can grow your own food and you can be sure that it doesn't have any synthetic pesticides or fertilizers or any other things that would impact your health. And when you're able to do this at home, and you're good to go, a nice hand of, not bananas, these are actually buffets. You can see for a difference in size. And there are many things we can do with this in the kitchen. Maybe Chef Adrian will show us something specifically on this in the future. Let's talk about the truth. The truth about organic agriculture. Now for the last three decades, organic agriculture has been growing and organic gardening globally. Particularly in Europe, um, every year more farmers, more gardeners, more persons are producing and consuming organic produce, even in the USA and at home in the Caribbean. Here in Barbados, we have the Organic Growers and Consumer Association, and they've been doing an excellent job of getting organic foods out to the public. The Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program, implemented by UNDP, we've ensured that farmers um, have the ability now to be certified by having internationally trained inspectors. Um, but what is organic agriculture? Organic agriculture is, very simply put, the ability of, of to grow plants naturally. So you're trying to create a natural agroecosystem where plants, the soil, um, insects, the um, living and non-living things, abiotic, non-living non and biotic living things work together in harmony. This is organic agriculture in a nutshell. Um, synthetic um, inputs are generally associated with conventional agriculture. So conventional agriculture is basically the production of, um, of crops and the reign of animals, but you're using synthetic inputs, such as synthetic fertilizers, um, synthetic pesticides, synthetic um, insecticides, synthetic weedicides, and also synthetic feeds. The problem with this is that although it is good in terms of increasing yield, um, it is very costly to the economy because many countries have to import all of these inputs. In addition, it has a significant impact on health, the health of the environment and also on human health. And in many cases, this impact is not positive, it is actually negative. And that's why we need to transition away from conventional agriculture towards organic agriculture, especially on a small island. And we can start it with organic home gardening. And this is what we're here to do. I'm gonna walk you through my organic garden around my home and allow you to, to grow green as I grow green. We'll grow green together. But we need some energy to do so. And I just got some buffets there from uh, my, my, my tree. And one is, is ready. I see the monkeys would have helped themselves to one already. Uh, but they get one, I get one, we share, and we live together. There's something special, but when you grow your own crop, you harvest it and you eat it. Come on, let's grow green together. Now look at this. This is one of my garden, it's a couple of my garden beds here. And you see sticking out of this thing, an okra. This is actually an old okra. Now, why would you leave an old okra plant right here? Because a key aspect of organic gardening is to be able to save and grow your own seeds. Now, you don't need to go to the hardware or the um, garden shop to buy everything. As a country, to save for exchange, we have to be able to grow some of our own seeds. It is gonna be especially important when it comes to food security. Many older people would know that okra is something that we really don't need to to go and buy any seeds for. You generally would grow the okra, allow a couple of the pods to stay on and dry, and then you have your own okra seeds. I left this here as well so you can see. 
you don't need to buy okra seedlings either because okras are easily planted directly into the soil and in no time you have healthy seedlings that you can transplant. This is another term you have to get familiar with, open pollinated varieties. Um, an open pollinated variety uh, means that you don't have to um, buy another seed because it's open pollinated, it's pollinated here on site and then it produces seed that when you plant you can get back the same result or similar result. Um, when you have hybrid seeds, when you buy them from the supermarket as a hybrid seed and you get fresh seeds from those when you plant, they generally don't grow well. If they grow, um, they don't produce proper fruit. If they produce fruit, it's very poor quality. Some of them have what you call a terminated gene that they don't even grow at all. Um, so it's important that we try to use open pollinated varieties in our organic garden. Another thing here, look we have some lettuce that is here. At this stage here, we can start harvesting lettuce. How we know we can start harvesting lettuce? Generally, it's about four weeks that you wait. So this is smaller because we grew it pretty close. And um, it's around this, this stage where you can harvest. Why you know you can harvest if you want to? Because this is open pollinated and you're seeing here that it's starting to bolt, right? This is starting to bolt at this point. This bolt in here in organic garden, gardens is not a problem. We allow these to bolt purposely because as these bolt and these come up, you're not supposed to eat it at this stage because it is going to be filled with latex. See, it's going to be very, very bitter. Um, but what happens is that this grows up and it produces seed. So you don't even need really to buy lettuce seed either. You can keep a couple of your lettuce plants. They grow up and you can take the seeds from the inflorescence. This is the part that flower that grows up in the middle. Call it an inflorescence. You can take the seed from that. Another important part of organic gardening. Um, from the time we started the shooting on this episode, and the episodes before from the time we started the entire series we have not had to weed this garden bed imagine that you can see some grass growing on the outside but you don't see any grass growing on the inside why is that because we placed on a mulch on the surface um, that mulch the national conservation commission and other places do provide it um, you can generally place it about two to three inches thick this was placed on about two inches thick now you see it's biodegraded so a lot of it is actually in the soil look at that look that mulch is no soil that mulch is no soil and that's a key part of organic the conventional farmer would have plowed up the bed and they would have sprayed a whole set of weedicides to kill weeds the weedicides can also get into the water table and contaminate our water they can also get into our food and impact us but when you place a mulch that is natural two inches three inches thick you stop any weeds from growing you don't have to water that often if i put my hand in here all down here is moist because it keeps the moisture in because the sun is not hitting the soil directly. In addition to that, when it breaks down through a process of mineralization, the organic nutrients then converts into a form that the plants can utilize and basically um, feed on it. So you're doing two things. You're controlling weeds, you're keeping the soil moist, but in addition to the triple benefit, you're providing nutrients to the plant at the same time in a slow release form. Now, there's so many lessons that I can teach you just on this garden bed, but we're gonna look a bit more and, and, and speak a bit more about diversity. You're gonna see this diversity in here. Um, you have kale, you have lettuce, before we had um, okras, you have uh, sweet peppers, you have um, some peppers that are slightly hotter at the end of life. And then over here, when we go over to this section, in our herbs, we have garlic chives, you have, um, Ghanese thyme, what they call Ghanese thyme is that form of thyme. Um, this one is more re resilient in terms of drought and excess water. We have basil, we have mint, and you can come here and just harvest whatever you want. And the variety is what helps you not to have to spend um, unnecessary money on pesticides. I have never used pesticides on any of these plants in my entire garden, never. Even my lawn, which is most of the time extremely green, never use pesticides, um, never use inorganic fertilizers. Everything is all natural. It saves money, but it's also good for the environment and it's good for your health. Um, when you have an organic garden, I spoke about diversity. We see here we have the buffet plants here in the corner. These are gonna help um, for two reasons, because you're gonna be able to get buffets where you're gonna use in your cooking. Um, but at the same time, you're gonna provide some additional shade. It means you're gonna have to do less watering. Uh, so there are many different benefits. I want you to look at another aspect of the garden. The amazing thing about organic agriculture would be the principles. 
Now, one of the things that organic agriculture promotes, or organic gardening, is reduction of soil erosion. Now, many of our homes may have areas that are sloped like this. As you can see over here, this is a terrace, which I would have terraced this area so we can have a flat area um, for a pool. So therefore, this can have erosion from the soil up top. But using organic garden principles, what I did is I put feather grass all across the top because of the fibrous nature it would hold in the roots. Those of you who are old enough to remember, um, we would use cuscus grass at the edge of the plantations next to the road to hold the soil in. And this is an important principle that organic agriculture applies. Then you have the biodiversity. So climbing up the actual um, embankment, we have philodendrons. But look, it's about organic gardening, not only for decorative reasons, but also for food. So I have a bit of bay leaf in here at the bottom. Ah, lovely. My papaw is here to stabilize, so any nutrients that washes down from the top and comes here, the papaw, the philodendron, the bay leaf, and any of these plants at the bottom can benefit from that. And that biodiversity not only helps in terms of stabilizing the soil from the top to the bottom and extracting the nutrients so they don't leach away, um, but it ensures that the whole ecosystem remains healthy. Key principle. Speaking of biodiversity, as we walk just a, a bit further down, you have the plumbago here that gives you decorative and this shows that you can mix your decorative gardening with your food crop production or your food gardening at the same time and even for your health you can see here we have the aloe growing here integrated into the shade and also some blue vervain which is very good again for health purposes um, keeping it um, realistic in terms of the same issue of soil erosion you can use instead of using feather grass you can use lemongrass so that when you're making your teas, lovely. You can just go outside, get your teas, but at the same time, you're reducing erosion on your, your property. Now, I want you to be aware that in organic gardening, it's all about recycling nutrients. So let's look at recycling nutrients. Follow me. Let me help you make this transition from conventional to organic gardening. Don't worry, I've got you covered. I'm gonna show you how to be able to grow healthier and more environmentally friendly produce around your home. One of the key components of organic gardening is being able to grow things in mixed culture. Uh, mixed culture meaning that you're growing more than one crop at the same time and therefore you're going to use them um, to be co-beneficial so they have co-benefits to each other. So basically here what you can see I have tomatoes here growing. I also have um, some chives here growing. Now there's a reason for this. And even if you look here, you're going to see some mung bean at the side. And we would have done an episode where we looked at growing microgreens and we used mung, mung, mung beans. This is all about recycling. So one of the things you have to keep in mind when you're growing organic, you're not going to grow just one crop. You're growing several crops and you're growing them in unison. Now, the tomatoes are here for a purpose. They're going to be deep rooted. These chives are very shallow rooted at the top. And also the chives have the ability to ward off certain insects. So if you look here, you're not going to find much insect problems here on this um, tomato, except for leaf miner. Now leaf miner is a popular problem when it comes to chives. So the chives are not providing that benefit of repelling when it comes to leaf miner because the leaf miner, they like chives. Um, but they're providing other benefits at the same time. In addition to that, you're gonna find that in organic gardening, you have to use inputs in more than one way. So it's a closed cycle. You're not just importing inputs but you're reusing things. So this at the top is a mumbine mulch. So we would have grown mumbine in microgreens and when we clipped off the microgreens at the top, instead of just throwing it away, um, you can put it to compost or you can put it as a mulch on top of your plant pots or your garden beds. Here it's serving as a, as a mulch so you don't have to water that frequently. It also biodegrades and it provides nutrients to these crops. So other than the initial nutrients that I put in, the other nutrients that this is getting to look so green and lush is mainly coming from the um, biodegradation of the mumbine. Um, at the same time, look at here. You can see a mumbine here growing. This is how it looks. Maybe you see it in the supermarket, but you never saw it growing in, in real life. This is how it looks growing in mumbine. It's not a normal thing that we grow in Barbados. But this can be also be taken from here and transplanted in another location. And, and therefore, this small little pot is doing several things at the same time. And this is what organic agriculture is about, 
creating a natural ecosystem where everything works together in harmony. So now that we know how to grow organic food, organic gardening, we know how to do that. We also need to know how to prepare it because I love to eat and I know you love to eat too. So we have, we have to know how to prepare it and prepare a delicious meal. To do so, we're gonna allow Chef Adrian to walk us through this with some organic ingredients. Hi guys, I'm Chef Adrian Kumbach and this episode of Grow Green, we're doing organic, okay? And green bananas. I'm gonna give for you today a saute green banana with some vegetables and herbs, tomatoes, very, very simple. Something you can add as a side dish to all of your meals using our local, local ingredients. So what I did first, in boiling water, a little oil so that you don't stain your pot. Add your green bananas and let boil 15 to 20 minutes, okay? It's very simple. Peel the skin off, very, very, it's pretty hot. Ooh, get away from me. Right, I see some people peel the green banana first. I, I don't want to do that. This is much, much simpler. Right. I remember all this here could be compost too as well, huh? Don't throw that away. Right. Let's get a green banana peel. You may want to let air cool. Woo! This one hot. Right. Guys, this is a very, very simple dish. So you're gonna have your green bananas, tomatoes chopped, and here I have my onions, carrots, Christophine, julienne, and here I have my herbs, French thyme, marjoram. Right, so we have our bananas peeled. You wanna take your knife and just Take out some of the excess skin, if there's any. Tip of your knife. T take the tips off. If you see any tips to take off, right. And what you want to do is you want to just cut your bananas in two. Right, so you just want to cut your bananas in two, just like that. In the meantime, you're ready here. Get your stove lit, get your pan hot. In here, I have a corn. I love corn. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love, 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 love corn. Right. So you wanna cut your corn in half, this way first. I'm gonna cut in half. Let's go this way first. All right. Cool. All right. No matter the corn kernels coming off, that's fine. Nice little nibble. Right, pot is hot. Oh yeah. Ooh. A generous amount of oil. I'm forgetting something here. Let's make a little room on the cutting board. You don't always want to work your cutting board. On tidy. Not good. But we are here doing organic food. Right. All is getting hot. I just need two cloves of garlic quickly. Quick chop. Right, let's start. Got it first. Your, your vegetables. Chef Asia, Chef Mix. 
salt, pepper, garlic powder, paprika powder, onion powder, all purpose seasoning. The green bananas. Tomatoes. Quick toss around. Ooh. Are your corn in that man? Your herbs. This is smelling good right here. Not to come to think about it, this makes a nice vegan dish. Unless you want to put a nice grilled pork on top there, a nice slab of fish or chicken, you know? You can, but you know, start by eating some green bananas, man. Long time thing. You could do various stuff with green bananas. You can mash it, you can fry it. You know, do it, do it, do it, boil it in the skin. Very, very simple, guys. Less than five minutes, this meal is ready. Let me plate this up. Let's plate this up. I want some green bananas on top so you can see. Add some corn in there. Add that sweetness, add your vegetables there. Green banana dish. Right. Now you rest of ingredients in there. Get everything you want, man. Tidy up thing. Some chopped herbs as garnish. Freshen it up, braising it up. Add that nice vibrant color and flavor as soon as you bite into it. There you have it, your green banana, your saute green banana with corn and vegetables, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you enjoy it. You follow the recipe nicely. I'm Chef Adrian Kombach. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye. finished yet because we have a grow green champion from the organic growers and consumer association mr john hunt who's been growing not only growing but also um, selling and providing advice on organic agriculture for several decades and he's gonna walk you through some organic gardening around his home as well My name is John Hunt. I'm the secretary of the Organic Growers Cooperative Society, which was formerly the Organic Growers and Consumers Association. We've been involved as a group in collective ag uh, organic agriculture for the past 22 years. What I think is important for people to grow their own organic food at home is to increase their food security by knowing they have at least a minimal amount around their home that they can eat, to grow high density nutrient food so that they have high nutrient returns on their food intake and also to help to conserve our ecosystem which is very delicate and based on our water table being just below us underground we need to con control how much chemicals, synthetic chemicals get to that water table. Growing food at home for us as a family has been a really good experience partly because the younger ones in the family can get involved and give us a collective thing to do together as a family and also to help us make sure we have things around the house all year round that we can use and eat. Things like breadfruits, things like papaya. Some of those things are hard to find certain times of the year 
and it can be quite costly. So it can impact both your health, your family, um, uni unity, and your pocket. The Organic Growers Cooperative Society offers you food you can trust, but we encourage you to grow green in Barbados. Well, this is the good thing about growing your own food and around your house. You can also grow, grow your own drink. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Grow Green Barbados. I look forward as we continue to grow green together. So ensure that you join us for our next episode as we grow green Barbados. This is good and it's organic. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.